time for my favorite show of the week. Stories of the week, week, week. I think it's because I have that um, little song in my head and it's like with Steven. Is it an actual song or a song that you've just made up? I just made it up, yeah. Oh, nice. I mean, I could maybe make it into a song. I don't, we'll see. But of course he's heavy's Stephen McCarty. I'm heavy's Kelsey McCarson. And this is the heavy on UFC story of the week. Presented by Real Talk with Rachel and Kelsey. You know, we got to come up with a better title. <laughs> Real Talk with Rachel, Kelsey, and Steven. It's pretty long. Our title's long. RKS. Hey, I'm, Real Talk, RKS. I'm glad to have you back on the show, Steven. I'm glad to have you talk about the story of the week because, you know, every week in the UFC, we have all these stories, all these great storylines that we get to talk about and that we get to write about um, for Heavy on UFC. And I want to hear what your favorite story is this week my favorite story of the week happened on saturday after the main event uh leon edwards Bilal muhammad uh welterweight title fight if you didn't watch it it went two rounds and then it ended after leon edwards poked Bilal muhammad in the eye i was waved off fight was no contest and it was like a pretty vicious eye poke um Bilal muhammad yeah it was it was it didn't even really seem like it was the full finger. It was almost a knuckle or something. I, it's hard. It's honestly hard to tell. And there's been a lot of images that have gone around that like Dana White shared. It was ruled a poke. And it was that bad where uh, Bilal Muhammad was was sobbing on the canvas, on the canvas. N- not just from the pain, but also, you know, from the opportunity loss. It was his very first main event. Um, and when I say this is my favorite story, it doesn't mean like it's my favorite, my it's favorite, great. like I'm happy about. But it's a compelling thing because... It's an interesting circumstance where you had Leon, who's ranked number three in the welterweight, who's on who's on the safe fight win streak, gives this opportunity to the number 13 ranked guy to fight a guy in the top five to like essentially just like like throw himself into the top five with a win. Um, But it ended in a no contest. Leon was looking really good in the fight. I gave definitely gave him the first round. He was looking good in the second as well. Um, so now it's like the big question, what do you do with these guys? Do you run the match back? Bilal wants to fight Leon, right? But now Leon is ready to move on. He's like, you know what? I gave him the chance. I, I was looking good in the fight. Uh, he was just on Joe Rogan's podcast. And on that podcast, he said, I'm a slow starter, and I was already doing that well against Bilal. There's no way Bilal was going to make it through five rounds. So it's just like an interesting thing because there was no – conclusion to that fight it was a no contest there's no winner so do you run that fight back what do you do because welterweight is such a star driven especially the top five it's so it's so star driven like do you run that fight back what about colby covington what about gilbert burns we now have this title fight that's gonna happen next month with uzman and uh Mazavadal, which we'll talk about in a bit here. Then you have like Leon and Colby, who could both be a number one contender right now. Do you put those guys together? Like it's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting. uh, Wonder Boy, don't forget about Wonder Boy. You got Wonder Boy, who's number five. I still think he needs at least, uh, he needs one more good win. I listen, I'm a Wonder Boy fan, but um, he needs, yeah, he needs. You got Colby there, who you know, last fight he beat up Tyron Woodley before that he obviously lost to Usman but it was an amazing fight yeah right that That was a great fight you have Leon now who he was on an eight fight win streak now it's now he has a one no contest you have number one versus number three you could put them together it's interesting I don't know do you run back this Edwards and this Bilal fight or do you kind of move on with the division because by the end of April or whatever um, after UFC 261 you're going to need a new number one contender so if you have Leon fight Bilal, and what do you say? Leon's the, do you say Leon's the number one contender? You know, if he wins that fight or what about Colby Covington? Who's Colby yeah. going to fight? He, a lot of people think he's the number one contender and should be fighting Usman right now. Yeah, it's a difficult thing. I feel really bad for Bilal Muhammad because he was so excited. And he told me um, when I talked to him before the fight that he, that was his mindset to always stay ready. He was on the undercard of Usman versus Burns, but in his mind, he was also maybe going to step in at the last moment to fight for the championship or fight somebody if they fell off the card. He was always going to be ready for five rounds. He finally, that's how he got that fight too, right? Edwards was supposed to fight Shamayev and Shamayev fell off the card. So he gets this opportunity. He's in there. And then, yeah, man, to get stabbed in the eye like that. And not get the not get the contest at all like that. That's heartbreaking. 
and he definitely hasn't taken it well. <laughs> no, and you don't blame him for him being like, yo, I, I want this fight again. Like, you didn't, you're t- to Leon Edwards. He's saying, Leon, you're the one that poked my eye or whatever. And now you get to move on to a number one contender fight. No, we have unfinished business. So, I wish there but, was I, but then you can understand. But then you can understand Leon's point where it's like, hey, listen, I was looking really good in the first part of this fight here. I kind of gave you this chance to come fight a top rank guy. Didn't work out. I'm ready to fight for the title now. I'm on this. I had this eight fight win streak. I want to fight Colby, which he does. He want, He was just talking to Rogan about this. He wants to fight Colby. He wants to earn that title shot. He doesn't want to wait around anymore. So you can understand both perspectives. It's going to be interesting to see what the UFC wants to do, but I think it's good for this division. I think this division needs some clarity at the top. It needs to know who's the next number one contender, right? Mm-hmm. If you have Colby out there and you have Leon, those are two guys that have a really good claim to be the next number one contender, right? So what do you do? You uh, put them together. Maybe you give Bilal like a Gilbert Burns because Burns wants to get back to action. Burns wants to fight. So you give him maybe Bilal, hey, you know what? Here's another chance of the top ranked guy. Maybe give him Gilbert Burns or give him someone like maybe Bilal can fight maybe the winner of Tyron Woodley versus Vicente Luque, who are fighting uh, in the next couple of weeks here, you know? Yes. The and what about Wonder Boy? And Michael Wonder Boy, and, see, and he doesn't, he wants fights against, he, like you said that he wanted to, he needs to have another good one. He wants the opportunity to get another good one, but it doesn't seem like anybody wants to fight him. Who won- Wonder Boy? I think Wonder Boy is also injured right now too, so I think he's, he's... Been calling out everybody though. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. Maybe he. Uh, I think he was definitely injured. I think he might be ready to come back. I guess in a bit here. He went he from no a- call outs to calling out Masvidal to calling out Covington, to calling out everyone. It's like, it seems like he's just going down the list of welterweight contenders. Maybe he'll end up with Bilal Muhammad. It's just yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I mean. It's just such a top heavy division in terms of star power. Like you almost have to call these guys out because like, look at Masvidal He's coming off a loss and he's getting the title shots because he's such a big star. And obviously he didn't have a full training camp uh, for the July fight with Usman. I don't know. Welterweight's really, it's fun. It's fascinating. It's like the lightweight division. There's just so many possible contenders, but they have to fight. We got to see these fights happen. Yeah. And your, your story of the week kind of, dissects with my story of the week which was of course the rematch between ufc welterweight champion kamar usman and ufc bmf champion <laughs> jorge masvidal that fight to me i get it while they're making it right that i think that outsold every other pay-per-view last year for the ufc it established masvidal as a star in the sport i mean he was already on that incredible run the bmf belt helped him that as well but i think that those pay-per-view mum- numbers everybody's attributing that to masvidal so they want to get masvidal back in the ring he wants to fight usman my understanding is that usman actually asked for this fight that's at least what his manager said on social media because the fight this is what the one fight i will say that maybe usman looks dominant he's one of them i think that i personally think he's one of if not the most dominant champion in the sport right now I think he's one of the best fighters, and I do think he's underrated, um, even with people saying how great he is. I think that he he reminds me kind of, I think I've written about this before, he reminds me of Floyd Mayweather a little bit when Floyd Mayweather was coming up, because Floyd Mayweather was great, but he didn't, he wasn't, back before everybody knew who Floyd Mayweather was, he wasn't Floyd Mayweather, right? He didn't wasn't this big pay-per-view draw. He wasn't a big draw at all. Um, and so Usman may be on that same path. But against Masvidal, I thought Masvidal fought really, really well in the fight in the first round until his cardio ran out because he only had five days notice. So to me, like the rematch is compelling because of the pay-per-view by number, but also because I think, you know, I want to see Masvidal go in there um, with enough cardio to at least go three rounds, if not all five. I'm pro this fight also. I think that, you know what? This was the fight we all wanted to see, right? You remember after Masvidal defeated uh, Nate Diaz, got the BMF belt. We all really wanted to say, see Usman versus Masvidal. It finally happened, but it didn't happen in like, yeah, like the best circumstances. Six days notice for Masvidal. Also six days notice for Usman too, right? He was not training to fight a fighter like Masvidal. Give them a full training camp. 
let them fight. What I like also is this is not really hanging up the division at all either, because this is happening next month. This is happening very soon, right? So it's not like this is, you know, when I think a few weeks ago, Masvidal hinted that he was going to get that light, the next welterweight title fight, but he was saying that it might not happen until September. That would have been kind of like a little harder to get behind because then now you're going to have the Colby Covingtons and the yeah. Leons and that Wonder Boys of the world having to wait until September just to see a title fight in their division, let alone fight in a title fight, right? So what I like that it's happening in April. I do like that, hey, Masvidal un, undeniably is one of the biggest stars in the sport. Give him that shot again on a full training camp. Give Usman also the chance yeah. to put in a better performance than what he did in July. He obviously won the fight. No controversy there. Unanimous decision. But he's even said that, like, listen, I think that I, like, I could have put on a way better performance yeah. if I had more time to prepare. He also said, I think, that he had a broken nose. Um, give him the opportunity to put a stamp on this rivalry also. Yeah. It's perfect for both guys. I'm, and the more I talk about it, actually, the more I'm excited about it, to be honest. And then as this is going on, I really like Bilal. I like that he came. Obviously, the main event did not go in any way that he wanted or the fans wanted or Leon wanted. But you know what? There needs to be clarity in this division. If Leon defeats Bilal, we're still going to be like, should it be Colby? Should it be Leon? You know, some people will be like that. And then you'll have other people I think that definitively should be one of them. Put Leon, Colby together. The winner of that number one contender fights the winner of Usman versus Jorge Masvidal. Give Bilal another fight against a guy in the top 10 or top five, like a Gilbert or a Wonder Boy. And then those guys can fight. And then th those guys can kind of figure things out. But I think that that makes sense to me. This is an exciting division. I love welterweight. I love Wells Ray. I love UFC action. Well, hey, Steven, it was great to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on to talk about your story of the week. I love when your story of the week and my story of the week complement each other. I think we do a great job. Of course, he writes for heavy. I write for heavy. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Real Talk with Cozy Ranch. But also go over there and like our Facebook page, Heavy on UFC. We'll leave a link in the no show notes. Thanks for watching. He's Steven. I'm Kelsey. Rachel's somewhere around here. And this is Real Talk. <laughs>